Lost in a world of specs trying to find a new laptop for your proud student? Here's a rapid fire course on everything you need to know to buy the perfect laptop. For the average student who browses the web and works in Google Docs or Microsoft Office, any current Intel processor will do the job. The fastest model is the Core i7, followed by the Core i5, i3, and Core M at the bottom. All of these are great chips, but Core M offers the best battery life, while Core i7 delivers the best performance. Frankly, most students don't need more than a Core i3 or Core i5. The confusion starts with the budget Celeron and Pentium processors, where Intel builds them on two very distinct technologies. All you need to know is a Celeron or Pentium with an N in the model number will give you fantastic battery life at the cost of overall performance. Celeron and Pentium models without an N will give you better performance but have less battery life. Laptops are often upsold on CPU cores, so you'll see quad core and dual core thrown around a lot. Most students don't need a quad core, so don't fall for their upsell trick. In convertible tablets that turn into laptops, you'll find mostly Atom processors. The Z series is the most common and fine, but it's slow. The new Atom X7 or X5 is better, but very difficult to find right now. How much RAM do you really need? This one is easy. Don't buy less than 2 gigs and don't buy more than 8 gigs. In fact, 2 gigs isn't even recommended unless you're on a really tight budget. The sweet spot is actually 4 gigs, with 8 gigs preferred for people who like to have a lot open on the screen at once. Anything else is a waste, and anything less is a big mistake. The best thing you can do for your student is buy a laptop with a solid state drive or SSD. It'll make everything just run faster. Unfortunately, they're expensive too. For a student, a 32 gig SSD won't hack it, and 64 gigabytes barely works. So assuming you can afford it, you better off for an SSD that's 128 gigabytes. Most students have massive music collections, and if you buy any less storage, your kid will cry foul. Vendors are also pushing hybrid drives that promise SSD-like performance. Don't believe that. They're faster than old school hard drives, but they don't compare to an SSD. You're better off just buying a regular old hard drive, and if you go that route, 500 gigs or one terabyte should be plenty of space. Is your kid going to school to play games or earn a degree so they can support you when you're old? I say that because the graphics already included in all modern laptop processors is good enough for everyone except the hardcore gamer. The only reason you'd want to pay for a discrete AMD or an NVIDIA graphics chip in a laptop is if your student is in a field that requires it. Some fields, like engineering or film, might actually require a graphics chip, so I won't rule it out, but for 90% of college students not going to school to be a professional gamer, they don't need it. Most laptops with discrete graphics are also heavier, bigger, and have a shorter battery life. For most students who do PowerPoint, Word, Google Docs, and web browsing, an HD resolution of 1366 by 768 is actually easier on the eyes especially on a small screen. That said, this smaller resolution limits the number of open windows you can fit on the screen. For this reason, I think the sweet spot is 1920 by 1080, or what's commonly called FHD or Full HD resolution. There really isn't a need for more resolution on a student laptop, and higher resolutions actually hurt battery life and can make the text look funny. Believe it or not, you're done. That's it. Just put on a blue shirt and head down to your local electronics store because now you're an expert.